As someone who's been playing Sonic games for all my life, it hasn't gone unnoticed how unfocused the series has been, constantly missing the mark at every turn. Or at least that's how it's felt for me for the last five or so years. The story and tone of the series has been constantly changing. Generally more dramatic games have been targeted as the downfall of the series for a long period of time, with the more comedy heavy games in the series being praised for raising the standards to new heights. From my experience, you can make practically anything good from a quality standpoint regardless of preconceived notions of what a Sonic game should be like, so for this editorial I'm going to give my take on this series and how it has handled storytelling. First, it's important to go back to the series roots and establish one thing. Within Sonic 1, neither one of these extreme forms of comedy and drama were really there. Sonic 1 takes a position of firm neutrality in tone, with levels that felt very grounded. Mario had always gone with the wacky stages and fought the crazy enemies. Sonic, on the other hand, ran through places that more or less heightened reality. Despite the level's now infamous legacy, the opening stage, Green Hill Zone, is far more laid back than its obnoxious clones would have you believe. A few loops, a few checkerboards, and so on. Beyond that, Sonic travels through ruins, cities, and factories. This also carried over into Sonic 2 and Sonic CD, as well as the coinciding 8-bit titles. My point is that in this era, the games hadn't really established a definitive tone to carry forward throughout the rest of the series, but the environment design wasn't particularly cartoony in comparison to other games on the market. Speaking of marketing, the character and his world were often considered edgier and far cooler than Mario could be. By 90s standards, of course. When Sonic jumped to 3D in the late 90s, more and more characters were introduced to the mythos as the series started taking itself more and more seriously, and just like I said at the beginning, this has been credited as the downfall of the series the sole reason why it wasn't working. By the time Unleashed and Black Knight rolled around, critics and older fans were just tired of the drama. 2010 was quite the year for the franchise since it revitalized interest for the crowd I just described with the release of Sonic 4 Episode 1 and Sonic Colors, especially with the series going back to its 2D roots, and this would influence the franchise for the remainder of the decade. Everything I just said are probably things you've heard a million times now, but I said it just to preface the question, was this a good thing? Or alternatively, was the tone the series went with in the 2000s a bad thing? Well, I've already gone over the fact that the games in the classic Sonic era were never marketed as this stupid stand-up comedy act as characters explain their own jokes to an insufferable degree, but I feel like I've already revealed my cards, so I might as well continue on this path. But first, I figured it was worth mentioning that the factors of storytelling aren't limited to the script and the plot points. The presentation is also an important part. As I was saying, the reason I'm even here today is because of the most recent main series Sonic game, 2017's Sonic Forces. This game has been all over the place when it comes to the reception, but many fans have expressed their disappointment with the misleading advertisement and just lack of focus. By the way, you can expect the points of this video to be expanded upon in future reviews, so keep that in mind. Like I said, the franchise has seen a change in 2010 with the people over at Sonic Team and Sega seemingly responding to the things many people were criticizing, like how there hadn't been a main series 2D game on console in ages, or how Sonic Unleashed was brought down by the Werehog stages and so we got a game all about the day stages concept. This is the beginning of what I will continue to refer to as the meta era of Sonic, an era that still persists to this day I might add. At the time, I definitely did agree that this was a positive direction since I really enjoyed Colors back when it came out, and Generations even more so in 2011. I still get my kicks out of both these titles to this day, neither is my idea of a perfect Sonic game, but still quite good with Generations coming out on top as one of my favorites in the series. The stories in these games, though, they're really not that good. Starting with Colors. The game's storytelling has been getting much more scrutiny in recent times, and I'm gonna say this is for good reason. It was more lighthearted, but the issue didn't really lie there. It had more to do with the awful cinematography as characters stand there. As we listen to our main characters crack jokes that really aren't that funny and never really were, but then go on to explain them in obnoxious detail. He means since the boss said nothing will stop me, and Sonic here is going to stop him, it's like the boss was calling Sonic nothing. Great! I thought nobody would get that. The line that single-handedly started this turn of Sonic being nothing but memes was this. No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! But as Sonic Dissected has shown, there really wasn't anything funny about it beyond the fact that copyright was, and still is, an immeasurable pain in the ass for people like me. The setup for the line wasn't there, and there's also no payoff, so therefore in context there's just no joke, nothing funny. This goes for many of the other lines as well. Generations is probably a worse story than Colors overall, it just has rushed out the door written all over it since the premise is great, but the story stops trying to do anything interesting after the second level as our characters spend the rest of the game standing around, 
waving their arms up and down, expositing. Generations is different from Colors of Lost World since the game doesn't really tell bad jokes. The story is just plainly non-existent, which depending on how you look at it might be in its favor since in hindsight we have seen how bad these plots can get. However, one thing that both games completely fumble the ball on are the dramatic moments. In Colors' case, we spend the whole game going baldy McNose hair, and when there's supposed to be drama going on in the last level with the great rendition of Reach for the Stars, I'm just uh, thinking about how at the first sign of a climax, Sonic stands there and says this. When I feel the ground shaking under my feet and see plumes of dust rising and rubble tumbling and aliens running for their lives, yeah, I get a bad feeling. So, how about you and me make like Eggman's hairline and recede? In Generations, they did try to get a bunch of characters involved, but they amount to no more than cheerleaders in the ending, which doesn't work since, again, we spent the whole game laughing about how bad and annoying all these post-Genesis characters are, and laughing at our main villains, so when the villains gain the upper hand for five seconds, you want me to take this garbage seriously? It just feels disingenuine, like it wasn't earned one bit. These two games suffered from poor cutscene direction and bad writing. While I've never played the game to finish, I can tell you that Sonic Boom on Wii U certainly has colors and generations beat in the former category. I mean, you can expect nothing less from a team of people that had their hands in the PS2 Jack and Ratchet games to some extent. Like I said, I never finished the game, I mean, for obvious reasons, but I think Boom shows how you can make a story worth tuning in for if you just present it well, even if the writing is lacking. But unfortunately, colors and generations failed in both categories as I've made clear. After years and years and years of nostalgia pandering awful memes about current events, a thoroughly cretinous Twitter presence, and we have Sonic Forces, which could have been an amazing return to form in the storytelling since we were promised a threatening new villain with a great design, a brand new vocal theme, and a dramatic hook as the heroes have to retake the world that's currently in ruins. But as I watched these cutscenes, I sighed in disappointment, tearing my games off the shelf like I'm Patchy the frickin' Pirate. That was just a bunch of cheap walk cycles! Ah, I'm sorry I ever started this stupid fan club in the first place! As the game from an animation and writing standpoint continued to squander every opportunity they had, Infinite was a brand new and original villain, but he just stands around and acts evil when they could have finally done something interesting with the reveal of his true identity instead of revealing him to be some guy who got upset in the free DLC pack. Not to mention the fact that he just flies away at the end. What, did they plan on his grand return in the next game? Well, this was your chance to make him interesting, and it flopped. Now who wants to see Infinite come back? The other characters could finally step up to the plate and do something for once since none of them have done anything since 2006. But no, they just huddle around praying for Sonic and classic Sonic to do something when all of them totally could and would have made for some cool levels, not cheap gimmicks to sell copies. Right at the beginning of Forces, Sonic is captured and evidently tortured for six months! And this also could have been SOMETHING interesting since it's a position he hasn't been in before, but he just comes out making jokes about feet kicking butt? Ugh. TGX and I have been saying it about Sly 4 for ages. If your characters don't care about the story, why should I? In a story like Colors or Generations where it's mostly fluff except for the very end, I can forgive it. But Forces legitimately takes itself really seriously, so I blame the writers for causing me to be so bored since the characters were just not written well whatsoever. The main concept of the game is a disappointment as well. Eggman has won, but this just happens in an Adobe Premiere text box, leaving Sonic Forces as a below mediocre game with a story that could have been great but was just pure ass. But trust me folks, I have saved the worst for last. Do you want to know what I consider to be the worst story in the history of Sonic the Hedgehog? My answers used to be Shadow or 06, but no. That title firmly belongs to Sonic Lost World. Oh my god, where do I begin? This game as a whole has been accused of a lot of things, ripping off Mario, ripping off classic Sonic for the sake of nostalgia, you name it, and it's all true! From the offset, you have characters marketed in a similar vein to Infinite, but these guys, the Deadly Six, they could never work. They were never gonna work, since they just look ridiculous! But that was only the tip of the iceberg for this mess. When you actually see our villains, they're some of the lamest characters in the history of video games. Rant view incoming, folks. Get ready. All of them have a single character trait, which I'm sure you've probably heard before, but it bears repeating since it's garbage! They exist for the sole purpose of telling jokes, 
which would be fine. But the problem is that these jokes are some of the crappiest bullshit I've ever heard. I probably could have said funnier lines when I was in kindergarten for crying out loud. I've got two words for you. Diet and exercise. No, I'm sorry you just have nothing better to do in your life. Get out of here. So our villains are made into cheap jokes, but the jokes aren't funny, so they just don't work. Even characters that aren't jokes are just so bland, like the old guy. What's his personality? What's the personality? What's the joke? What is it funny? He's old and teaches stuff. Hell if I know what it is. The girl likes nail art and says, call me. For what reason? I'm sorry, but if you want me to laugh, you're going to have to establish context as to why these throwaway stereotypes are funny. That doesn't even scratch the surface of what's wrong with this story, though. The story just straight up makes no sense and has some of the worst moral values I've ever seen. Here's the rundown. Eggman was controlling the Deadly Six until Sonic stupidly kicks the controller away. Now all of their lives are in danger, so to make up for his own mistake, Sonic and Eggman decide to team up once again, since that happened on numerous occasions, to shut down the machine that Eggman built that the Deadly Six have under their control. A mutually beneficial partnership. Sounds like a fine story. Sonic would learn in the end that thinking first is the best course of action as he and Eggman battle another day, yada yada yada, like usual. Maybe it was tired, but anything is better than the garbage they went with. Tails is here too, and he has no problem with this team up at first, like usual. But then this comes straight out of nowhere in one of the worst scenes in gaming. And you don't trust me to do it! First, I've talked about awful cutscenes, but we are literally in the middle of a black void of nothing with lights and a table! As the script tries so hard to give these characters real lines, but they sound so dumbed down and stupid! Eggman, you bite! In the end, Eggman does indeed betray the heroes, because of course he would, but this is after the machine is down. Tails gets in a told you so moment, and Sonic apologizes for doubting him, even though that never happened! What's the moral here? Whine when your friend tries to make up for his mistake, and then when you were sort of right, you brag about it? What? I don't really care what the moral is, I'm just saying, this is such an inept story. I was talking about insincere drama earlier, and this game makes colors, generations, and even forces look like The Last of Us. The tone in Lost World is so all over the map that I couldn't even draw one. Seriously, the game at times takes itself so disgustingly seriously and it's laughable with the awful English acting and cheesy as all get out script. There is this scene where Tails gets captured and I was rolling out of my seat! Those rotten sneaky! Tails acted for the greater good. Let's make sure his sacrifice isn't for nothing. I'm supposed to be the fastest, but I was too slow to save my buddy. What are these lines? Those rotten, sneaky... The funniest part being how this game is so inconsistent with its own censorship. The game got a higher rating because of this completely out of place rant from Eggman. I will burn your worlds, you rebellious scum! I will destroy everything you love and make you watch! No! 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 This comes right after stupid lines like That was, was cool. cool. Pun entirely, entirely intended. intended. Then there are more antics when we talk about mass genocide and Tails almost getting himself killed. killed! It's like, what the hell? Is this story supposed to be serious or not? It's a short game with a minimal amount of cutscenes, but with scenes like Amy dying, I feel like it is. But then our villains are completely stupid and nobody takes them seriously. They even turn Tails into a robot, and you think he's finally gonna do something for once in the meta era, but literally he doesn't do anything, and the armor's just gone in the next scene as Sonic takes a nap in the ending, like none of it ever happened. What a load of garbage. Even then, Sonic Lost World is one of the greatest examples of ludonarrative dissonance that I have ever seen. The story and the gameplay literally cannot take place in the same universe as the intended one-time power-up from Colors are back, but not in the story. Or how we travel to all these practical environments in the cutscenes, but then we play on floating tubes in the sky with Green Hill imagery drugged up times a million to pander to nostalgia? Which isn't even the worst example! 
So many levels have just no context or reason to exist. Like how we play in a beehive and fucking Care Bear Donut land in the middle of the sky. Seriously, how do you mess this up? The script isn't even consistent with the cutscenes. Take that scene I was talking about in Eggman's Lair, for example. I was talking about the black room with the lights and all that. Sonic literally says, whoa, overcompensate much? Like I said, we're literally looking at a black room with lights. I know I'm gonna get heat for saying this, but I believe every word. Sonic Lost World is the worst story I have ever seen put into a Sonic game with inconsistent writing, shite motivations, terrible villains, Ludo narrative dissonance, and way more wasted potential than forces could ever give us. It says something about your half drama, half comedy hybrid that I was cringing through every joke and died laughing at every single attempt at drama. That got me thinking, what is a good Sonic story? I've clearly shown how the meta era games so clearly try to kiss up to the Genesis games and feel hard at doing so. But on that note, how about the games from the Dreamcast and Dark Age? Rant over, because I'm not going to be labeled as a massive nostalgia blinded buffoon, but I accept the title with full force. Can I just say by starting that I don't need Sonic to be a gothic nightmare every game in order for the story to be good? I can tell you now that I enjoyed the story in Sonic Heroes. It's similarly lighthearted to Sonic Colors and onwards, but it feels genuine. The characters act in character, have friendly banter, and the story has dramatic moments when it counts, like Team Dark's playthrough. Hey Omega, did I ever tell you that Shadow is a robot and... Oh, never mind. Good luck. You know about cloning. The original must exist somewhere. The game has some elements that don't work. The levels aren't as practical as the Adventure or Genesis games, but they do still feel like real environments we're traveling through with some elements of foreshadowing, like how in the Canyon stage you encounter all these capsules resembling the one Shadow was found in at the beginning. What do you know, it's revealed that this Shadow isn't the only one running around. Not everything sticks, of course, like the cheesy lines in the climax, but on the whole, I liked it. But a great example of a story being more lighthearted but still providing memorable story would be Sonic Riders. The presentation is great, as the characters do a great job of emoting, as we get gags that reflect the personality of the characters rather than coming at the expense of them, which means that dramatic moments still have impact. Like how Sonic really wants to win the race, but is bored with sabotage by the opposition, so he loses. But when he gets that second chance to prove himself with no setup or anything, he wins. Basic setup and payoff. It's simple, really. On the other side of that coin, I actually found Zero Gravity's story to be kind of weak when I played it again for this video, since the cutscenes, much like Generations, consist of characters standing around and expositing with minimal story and character interactions. But back on the subject of the more serious games, I'm thinking all of the best moments in the history of the franchise, and none of them came from these shitty-ass stand-up comedy acts as we explain our jokes, exposit, and botch drama so bad that it's laughable. This doesn't just come from the unholy Dreamcast and Dark Ages that I grew up with either. This goes all the way back to the Genesis games, when Sonic came close to Robotnik but is then sent down to the caves, giving you that extra motivation to get back up there and face that final boss. How about in Sonic 2 when Sonic is falling with no chance of recovery, but Tails shows how much he cares about the friendship by saving him from certain doom? Remember in Sonic 3 when you spend the whole game trying to make sure the Death Egg can't take off, but when it does, you have to desperately chase the thing, and by the skin of your teeth, Sonic and Tails make it on board to stop Robotnik from using the recently stolen Master Emerald from destroying everything. See, the Genesis and Dreamcast era games aren't as different as you may think. Back on the list of great Sonic moments, I remember spending all of SA1 trying to stop Chaos from growing, and so that gave you the incentive to travel through the levels and stop that from happening. But when your efforts were revealed to be in vain, it felt like a crushing defeat. All the while combined with flashes of the past as our heroes see the tragedy that unfolded thousands of years ago to the Echidna tribe that led to Chaos being the way he is now. This came to a head in the last story where Chaos is in his final form and Sonic realizes that sealing him again won't change anything and transforms into Super Sonic for the very first time in 3D graphics as you blaze through the flooded, destroyed city as open your heart blasts in the background during this epic encounter. The presentation of Sonic Adventure has aged like cheese. And not an aged sharp cheese, more like a slice of bry that's been sitting under your fridge for two years. But this is cool! 
that's the key word here. I'm interested in seeing what goes on throughout the narrative since it's simply interesting and this was never done before in platformers at the time. It's similar to the Sly trilogy in that way. Not presented the best, but it still is interesting since the story is worth following. I'll take the stories of SA1 or Sly1 over Jack1 any day, and that game has some of the best animation in the business. SA2 is actually the exact same way. While there are plenty of things I don't like about the game, it was, for lack of a better term, epic. Unlike Forces, we see Sonic in a position of vulnerability that we hadn't seen before, and he reacted accordingly in his battles with Shadow as the characters have moments to spare before the Earth is completely eradicated by Eggman. The story has stakes, not just because big things happen, but because the characters act like it's serious, and therefore the drive to finish the game is far stronger. Like in Crazy Gadget as Sonic has to forget his goal of shutting down the laser cannon as he makes a mad dash for the control room while Eggman holds tails and aiming at gunpoint. As a kid, I was on the edge of my seat as you might expect. As if that wasn't good enough, the last story once again makes the climax of the main story feel like it is nothing as the arc itself is crashing into the earth with Sonic and Shadow stepping up to save the day as Live and Learn kicks in as the earth is within 5 minutes of complete and total destruction. I still have no idea what these lyrics are even about and it fits perfectly. I'm not just trying to recap moments here, but the point I'm trying to make is that once upon a time, things were happening at all, which puts these games above colors or generations. And the writers told the stories of, say, 3K or SA2 or Sonic 06 even with sincerity. They wanted it to be epic. They wanted it to be interesting and good. It doesn't feel like there's an ounce of cynicism or censorship under the radar like in Lost World or Forces. Why do you think fans still remember Shadow's sacrifice and the ensuing bittersweet ending as Sonic bids him farewell on his way off the arc with the rest of his friends? Because it was memorable! Because it did come after a huge journey with stakes and characters we liked. Things like this were reasons why we kept playing these games instead of Mario or Crash. The characters in the universe that kept expanding game after game was why we enjoyed these games and kept coming back. Yes, the story of Shadow the Hedgehog was an absolute disaster and was about as hilarious as Forces when it came to its dramatic moments since the execution was just plainly awful, not to mention insanely inconsistent. Sonic 06 is riddled with plot issues, none of which that are minor nitpicks like SA2. As the internet has said time and time again, the time travel rules make no sense, the motivations are absolutely contrived with questions raised that can never be answered, but the characters involved made it worth finishing when I was a kid. I will never forget the ending of Shadow's playthrough as he and his friends take a stand against Mephilus, or just Shadow's playthrough as a whole, since it provided a fitting send-off for the character, as well as Rouge and Omega, or how the fantastic Solaris Phase 2 music played over the final boss. I enjoyed exploring actual environments with a story behind them, like the ruins or theme parks of SA1, the different layers of Angel Island in Sonic 3K, the new ideas and locations from the storybook games with the intense action set pieces littered throughout as Sonic rode logs down rivers and flew on magic carpets across the night sky or battled dragons and volcanoes, ending Black Knight on a very interesting moral note. How about the countries of Sonic Unleashed, which by the way might just hold the crown in terms of having great build up throughout the story with a truly epic climax of cinematic camera angles, daring set pieces, and an ending shot that leaves you satisfied with a journey that has been completed as endless possibilities plays in the credits. All of these games from Sonic 1 all the way to Sonic and the Black Knight have left me with moments, imagery, set pieces, music, and storylines I will never forget and this includes handheld games, spin-offs, you name it. Yes, I do not want the stories to be as laughably tryhard as Shadow War 06, but I don't think any other game suffered from that other than those two. Story-wise, the rest of the series was definitely not the greatest works of fiction you'll ever see, but it kept me and other young fans coming back as well. Colors and generations are one thing, but I am just personally appalled as a longtime fan by the stories of Forces or Lost World especially. 
I said in my Sonic Advance retrospective last summer that I was alienated by the series and wasn't a big fan anymore, just somebody who casually enjoyed them. But that marathon brought me back and made me care, with the delicious treat of Sonic Mania coming right after I finished it. Now I do care again. I do want consistent quality, and not the meme-based, nostalgia-pandering garbage that we've been getting lately. The developers of Boom had the right ideas and attitudes, but the game was a flop and so anything it did was scrapped. All I'm saying is that instead of calling back to what we think the Genesis games were, why not go back and realize that the adventure games and some of the Dark Age games like Unleashed or Black Knight were really just taking what the Genesis games had done and taking them to the next level. Games like Shadow and 06 failed at this, but I consider them still better than Lost World or Forces since they at least did what they did with conviction. I do want to see this series improve, and while this script might make you think I'm referring to like SA3 or something, I'm really not. I just want them to stop with the meme humor, stop with the lol, look how bad we are attitude they have now. Not to mention hire better writers for the main games, I might add. I just want them to stop being so scared of what the Dreamcast and Dark Age games stand for, since I just see the intent to take the series in the next level in those games, whether it worked like SA2 or Unleashed, or if it didn't like Shadow Row 6. I do believe that Sonic 06 is probably the worst Sonic game for what it's done to the series, but I still have a bit of a soft spot for it, admittedly, but I can expand upon that in a later video. All I have seen in the years from 2010 to now is a regression of the series I used to love, and while the games might still be good, or bad, it's never too late to improve the quality standard from the low points that are Lost World and Forces. Have your characters take themselves seriously, and do it with writers that want to be writing it since they care about the series and its history. Stop basing the series' marketing on lol look how bad we are, do this, make Sonic cool again, and I think you'll have a good story and a good game on your hands. This video's gone much longer than I was planning, but hey, if you managed to sit through this ramble filled with rants and praise, and some points in between, I thank you. This will be the first of a few editorials I plan on doing this summer to keep you guys with content flow while I cook up some great reviews for the fall. So once again, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.